Let's start the week with some good news. I know, strangely, that some people are not into sport, which is the expression often used. They're not into sweaty people. But in politics, all we seem to get is failure and alarmism, negativity and a total absence of hope. People turn off. They hate the process and they hate the people in it. And then the sport. Hope, optimism, extraordinary sacrifice, which often produces exhilarating endeavour. And that is what we got last night with the Matildas. As that fine journalist Will Swanton said, the team launched into orbit against Canada. Proving they were not a one-woman team, Sam Kerr, the Matildas attacked, they played tough, four zip against the Olympic champions Canada. Sam Kerr didn't play, but apparently fired up the team before the match. And since the Matildas played Canada last time, this outfit, Australia, have won 11 out of 13 games, scoring 33 goals to eight. They've beaten Sweden 4-0, Spain 3-2, England 2-0, France 1-0, and now Canada 4-0. As I said, Canada, the Olympic champions. The coach says, we've got something unique, which means we know we can beat anyone on any given day. Well, on last night's showing, minus Sam Kerr, he might be right. It's exciting stuff, the like of which you don't get at question time, do you? Then there's Rugby League, Daily Cherry Evans, an extraordinary triumph for a kid from Mackay. Playing for Manly at the weekend, celebrated a career milestone, 300 Rugby League first class matches, and he's still going. Playing and leading splendidly, providing for the Manly fans excitement and expectation. Well, then we've got the World Swimming Championships. But before they began, we had the World Diving Championships and a 22-year-old Australian, hardly mentioned, Cassiel Russo, became the world 10-metre platform diving champion, beating his Chinese rivals and preventing China from claiming a clean sweep of all diving categories. A world champion, yet in this often unequal world of sporting riches, this young bloke works as a receptionist at a health spa, City Cave in Clayfield, a suburb of Brisbane. He's studying psychology at Griffith University. He knows now that the Chinese will come after him, but there's no big money for a world diving champion. He'll have to rely on sponsors to keep him afloat. Sad, isn't it? That we reward failure in Canberra with higher salaries, but Cassiel Russo, a world champion in a difficult diving discipline, has to rely on the goodwill of others to keep going. And then the swimming. One of the great coaches of Australian sport is Dean Boxall, the 46-year-old born in South Africa, head coach at the Brisbane-based swim club, St Peter's Western. He moved to Australia when he was seven, and beyond that, little is known, except that he churns out the champions. Ariana Titmus, who won a magnificent gold medal in the 400 freestyle, thrashing two former world record holders. Shana Jack, a magnificent silver medalist in the 50 freestyle. But in the women's four by 200 metre freestyle relay, each of the four Australians who swam the final and broke the world record, each was trained by Dean Boxall. And then the girl from Logan, another Boxall girl, the teenager Molly O'Callaghan. She broke the oldest record in women's swimming, the 200 freestyle. And it's my opinion that no one will get near her in Paris, Molly O'Callaghan. Young girls like O'Callaghan and Titmus breaking world records, making us all proud of what young people can do. I should mention though, the 26 year old American, Katie Ledecky, regarded as the undisputed goat, greatest of all time. Look at the lovely smile. She has surpassed all the records and achievements of almost everyone who's ever dived into a pool. It's hard to believe, but arguably greater than Michael Phelps. She's won world and Olympic titles at 200, 400, 800 and 1500. And it's hardly believable that of the fastest 30 times ever recorded for the women's 800, this American whom you just saw, Katie Ledecky, owns the top 29. But back to us, pleasingly, Kyle Chalmers proved himself our greatest ever male sprint swimmer against a stacked field of class that included the world record holder, Kyle Chalmers was magnificent. Dawn Fraser, of course, is our greatest ever sprinter with three successive Olympic gold medals, 56, 60 and 64. But Kyle Chalmers won the gold medal for the 100 freestyle at Rio. I was there in 2016. He was still in high school. Seven years on, after a lot of injury and adversity, he is the world champion. 
So's the young man from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. 19-year-old Sam Short, the new star of men's distance swimming. Gold in the 400 freestyle, breaking a long-standing Grant Hackett record. Second in the 800 and in a remarkable, well, I think almost ridiculous, 1500, he was third. I said ridiculous. I have never seen anything like this. This is swimming a mile competitively, swimming faster than what some of us could run 1500. The Australian Sam Short went out in world record pace. He was then overtaken by the Tunisian Hafnui and the defending champion, the American Bobby Fink. At the end of the metric mile, 1500 metres, Hafnui won by a touch. They slogged it out together for 1500 metres, one never losing sight of the other. Hafnui won in 14 minutes, 31.54 seconds. The American Fink was second, 14 minutes, 31.59 seconds. The winning time, 0.05 seconds faster than the second place getter after a mile. It's never happened before and it'll never happen again. A magnificent Sam Short at 19 was third in a splendid personal best, five and a bit seconds behind those two. And then there was Cameron McAvoy, 29 years of age. Coach after coach had failed to realise his potential. I've spoken often to this young man. He's a magnificent science scholar. He didn't swim at all last year and then decided to coach himself. Little volume, practice speed. He's never made an international 50 freestyle final until this year. His World Championship 50 freestyle swim was astonishing. 21.06 seconds, the fourth fastest time in history and a new Australian record. Proof that you can overcome what often seem insurmountable odds. How do these achievements compare with the ordinariness we have dished out to us every day in Canberra? Cameron McAvoy is the first Australian man to win the 50 metres freestyle gold medal at either the World Championships or the Olympics. And then there's the young lady who looks like Miss World, Kaylee McEwen, the first swimmer to compete the elusive backstroke treble, 50 metres, 100 metres and 200 metres. But she was in relays and heats. She never seemed to be out of the pool. And when she won the 200 backstroke in her last race, physically exhausted, her winning time was just outside her own world record. Her coach, Michael Bowl, also does a remarkable job with his swimmers. So there we were, 12 gold medals. The Great American Challenge never eventuated. The Chinese seem to be the team on the make, along with some brilliant individual French swimmers who are bound to send the locals nuts at the Paris Olympics. Watch for one name, Leon Marchand, a 21-year-old Frenchman. Gold in the 200 butterfly. Gold in the 200 individual medley. Gold in the 400 individual medley. In world record time, he left the 100 butterfly to his teammate, Maxime Grousset. Come Paris, You'll be able to hear from here, the French cheering from the pool. And then there's a cricket, a splendid team against a very good England side in a series spoilt by rain. Fittingly, a drawn series, two wins each and a rain-induced draw. The greatest triumph though was the return of Test cricket as a splendid spectacle. This was gripping. In no test was the winner ever obvious. The two captains must take great credit. But here are young Australian men without an ego, pouring it on in concentration and commitment in the interest of their country. Can we say that about our politicians? The great Englishman Stuart Broad, who's retired, a man has destroyed Australian cricket on many occasions. In fact, no one in test history has taken as many Australian wickets as the 37-year-old Stuart Broad, the son of the former English test opener, Chris Broad, who grew up watching his side repeatedly lose to Australia. I understand Stuart Broad will continue in the world of the media talking cricket. He's finished at the very top. Last week, he became the fifth player in history to reach 600 test wickets. Watch for another name, by the way, on the Australian scene. They keep coming. The 24-year-old gifted West Australian all-rounder, Aaron Hardy. He may be a new name for the tour of South Africa, a bowler and a batsman of real quality and only 24. But here is sport elevating and exciting us when politics often does nothing but depress us. But how is it that there's so much talent on the sporting field but sadly lacking in the field of politics. And one final sporting story, the great Lance Franklin, Buddy, has damaged his calf muscle. He's played his last game for the Swans and his last game of AFL. He's one of the all-time greats. Franklin's freakish acts on the field became routine. 
He's moving, he said, to the Queensland Sunshine Coast with his family. Who knows where this unbelievable journey will continue. But as one writer said, his football did the talking for him and it always had much to say.